Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry with JR. We're both from Bell Lost Souls, and today we're going through some of the faction rules for Vigilus <laughs> Defiant. We've got the new campaign book. Uh, so far, we have covered the lore uh, that has taken us from basically all the releases for like the past 18 months of, of 40k up to the point now where we're talking Vigilus. Uh, we, we've covered the campaign rules, yeah. which show you how to fight the battles that have led us to this point on Vigilus, or make your own campaign. Yep, really cool narrative-driven stuff, or for match play too, if you want. Mm -hmm. And then today we are diving into the faction rules. Now this yeah. is where a lot of the new game-changing stuff uh, for a lot of you match players out there. I know a lot of folks this are very is interested. Like, this is this big is the deal. big exciting stuff because yeah. this is where we get the uh, the specialist attachments. Yes. Um, uh -huh. Which or or as we've been calling them, formations 2.0. They are now. Uh, before we go any further, I feel like we do need to clarify what the heck specialist attachments are. Yeah. No. No kidding. There's a cause... lot of confusion. Uh, we want to help clear up. So specialist attachments. If your army is battle forged, you can. Uh, spend a command point to uh, make one of your detachments a specialist attachment. You can do more than one, but you can turn a specialist attachment into uh, one of your other detachments into a specialist attachment. The way these work, uh, and we'll get to these a little bit later, but you basically you pick one of the detachment rules, the specialist attachment rule, that will target specific units in that detachment. For example, there's the Space Marine one. Uh, for the Primaris veterans, for the Indominus Crusade, most of the Primaris units in that detachment uh, will get the the special keyword Indominus Crusader. Um, that just means nothing at first because it's just a keyword, but that will help trigger a lot of other abilities and also unlocks uh, new relics and warlord traits and additional stratagems that you can use on those units with those specific keywords. Yeah. So this is a lot like formations. But it's very, it's at the same time, it's very different. It's very different, yeah. yeah. So your, your whole army is not getting these benefits. It's just a it's specific one detachment, detachment. And you have to pay the command point to do it. And uh, if you want, you can spend more. Uh, many of the detachments offer options to like upgrade them when you pick them. Right. Uh, for instance, there's one I want to talk about right here, which is the field commander strategy. Yeah, this is a big deal. Absolutely. Uh, not just a big deal for this specific campaign, but I think a big deal for... Match play in general. Yeah. And JR, why don't you explain so what Field Commander does? The, the way it works is, uh, again, you use this stratagem before the battle, and I I might be wrong about this, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if you use it before the battle, it means that you can't counter it with uh, Agents of Vect or uh, right. this re is during regain. The list building. Yeah, you can't <laughs> regain spent command nope. points or, or have your gone. opponent steal them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so but you, before the battle, when you have picked a specialist detachment, uh, to, to use. Right. You can spend an additional command point to give a character, not just like a, a, a an HQ, but a character, yeah. the uh, warlord trait for your uh, specialist detachment. Um, yeah. As long as it's not like a named character. Right. So in essence, let's use the space for an example. You could take a lieutenant. Right. You could you could take a captain as part of the your detachment. Your detachment. Make him your warlord. Make him your warlord. Give him all the bells and whistles. Give him like a warlord trait that has nothing to do with your specialist detachment. You can spend it. Yes, you have to spend the command point to nominate the detachment. Mm -hmm. Then you spend another command point to nominate that lieutenant in, the, in said detachment as the field commander, Bingo. and then you can give him the warlord trait for that specialist detachment. There you go. Um, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, this opens up a lot of key keywords, uh, a, a lot of tricks and traps, essentially. And, and now um, they do speci specify that no two characters can have the same warlord trait. So correct. you got to you got to keep it separate, but that's actually really good just being able to take uh two warlord two traits. Warlords. And if I read this correctly, I think you can have use this uh strategy for the battle uh, choose one character. I think this is only once can you can you have more than one field commander? Uh, uh, no, this can be used once for each specialist detachment stratagem you've used. You have to spend one CP each time you use it. Right, but... so you can nominate detachments to have additional field commanders, and then they can also have their detachment warlord traits. But, again, that's unlike gonna cost formations, you... right. that costs 
a lot of command it's, points. It's going to cost you command points, which you want for rerolls and for using using the stratagems that yeah. power the specialist attachments. So again, if you want to, uh, if you're playing uh, whatever missions and you have three attachments, if you want to have three more warlords, you can totally, you can totally do that. Totally do that, but That's it's going to cost, cost you six command points. Six command points to do that. So want to clarify that these are not as uh, game breaking as they sound because. A lot of the power comes from being able to then spend your command points on the extra strategy. Yeah. So anyway, that's enough okay. about that. Specialist detachments. I'm actually less worried about them. Uh, a lot less worried about them than I was for formations. Yeah. To clarify. No, I'm I'm like super excited to see yeah. how these like change the game. I don't think yeah. they're gonna break it, but I think they're gonna give the players that get them like a lot to innovate with. Yeah. And it, it makes me think that's a cool way for GW to like expand the tactical options that players have without, you know, adding a whole bunch of new stuff. Right, right. So, we're going to show off, we're going to talk Calgar and right. the, the Honor Guard here, but we're going to focus but, mainly on Calgar. And then, then, we'll, then we'll get back to the, yeah. the specialist stuff. You so, didn't think we weren't going to show this data sheet. Yeah, I mean, come on, he's Papa Smurf. Yeah, Papa Smurf is back. He's bigger and badder than ever. Uh -huh. uh, if you saw our, our lore video, we talked about it. Uh, he was the first Classic Marine? Is that what we're calling him? Old Marine? Tiny Marine? Old yeah. Marine? Old, baby Marines? Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a classic Marine that turned into the first one to undergo the Primaris Protocol to prove that it can be done uh, because he wasn't going to ask his men to do something that he wouldn't do even though the failure rate was like 30%. Yeah, I, Marnius Calgar played Mass Effect and made his Shepherd a Paragon. That's right. know it. You know it. You know. It. Maybe you went renegade. No, he was. He, no, he was. He was pulling. He was those, like, I don't want. He was doing those left trigger interrupts all the way through. He was like, I don't want anybody to find my save file where I'm a renegade. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, being the hero he is, he went and and underwent the Primaris transformation, and it worked. And here he is, yeah. big. He beefy. did die, by the way. Yeah, yeah. He was dead for like half an hour. He died on the table, but they juiced him back up. And yeah. He... And you know, Belisarius calls magic organs, brought him back to of life. Of course. That's what uh, they do. That's what the extra wounds are for. Yeah, uh, he's a beast. Uh, stat wise, movement six. He's almost a little. He's a little primarch. He's a little tiny primarch. Yeah. What What's funny is they basically like if you look at uh, new Marnius compared to old Marnius. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, yeah. You, you You see that they've just like they've added a point of toughness, to giving him an extra attack and an extra wound, which is what happens to all Primaris. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> it's, it, folks. It's, it's pretty great. But at the same time, he was already kind of B A to begin with. So. Yeah. Getting that extra, <laughs> getting that extra stuff is really spicy. Yeah. Uh, also, he's got uh, new armor. Yep, he's got. But he's the... still rocking the old comments of Ultramar. Right, Ultramar. Like those are the same old. If you look at the model, the paint job they, they showed, they're actually like the gauntlets are still chipped and battered because they're old and have but, been through battle. But yeah. his his armor is brand yeah. shiny, right spank and the, new. Because who you know. What uh, what good ultimate wouldn't polish armor? And it's armor. really good armor. It's the yeah. armor of Heracles, which is a four up, gives him a four up invulnerable save on top of on top of a two plus normal save, which yeah. doesn't hamper his movement, and it halves all damage suffered by him. Which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, the Gauntlet Gauntlets of Ultramar, those haven't really changed. Those are they, still they, nasty. They're the, they're the same as they ever were. Yep. Uh, and if you notice too, in melee, they are basically power fists that do not have a negative uh, effect to his attack so roll. He's, he's hit still hitting on, on twos. And, and re-rolling. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty nice stuff. Plus, he's got all the Chapter Master goodies. Uh, and of course, check out his keywords. They've also updated that. He's got the uh, Mark X Gravis and uh, he's Primaris. Primaris. Yep. yep. Uh, and then, of course, you have his Victrix Honor Guard, who I really like. I, I love these guys. They are, yeah. uh, uh, they're, they're heroes. They fight like heroes, and um, uh, you can just do some cool stuff with them. They have some specialist detachment yeah. shenanigans they uh, can get away with. I want to call out, too, real quick, uh, being being Primaris, mm -hmm. stat-wise, they're Primaris. They have a two-up save. Uh, they come equipped with a Power Sword, Storm Shield, and Frag and Cracker Knees. They come standard with a Storm Shield. That's right, folks. Two up or three up. Yeah. What's up, Custodes? Yeah. What's up? What you got? <laughs> we're like you, but not quite. But, not, but, but almost. But we're, we're getting close. We're pretty if close. They, if they try hard, they might yeah. be. Uh, what's what's cool about this unit, and again, there's only you can only have there's only two models in the unit, yep. but they function as bodyguards, and they can soak uh, wounds, essentially, from uh, from characters, ultimate characters nearby, which is, I mean, appropriate. Yeah. Uh, Points-wise, we're not going to get any points, but you can see them there on the screen. Uh, let's go over to the specialist attachment here that we're going to show off. Okay. I think. Uh, do we do we know which one? Uh, so we could show off the either the uh, we can show off the Victrix guard. Show what you can do with the honor guard. Yeah. 
Let's do it. Um, all right. This so, one hasn't been spoiled as far as I know of. So. Yeah, this these are the Ultramarines, and they, yeah. they, uh, they've got some cool stuff. So, again, it costs you a command point, mm -hmm. um, it, but but that gives you access to two stratagems. Uh, yeah. One is which one is cheap, and one is super expensive. Yeah. Uh, and then you get some relics and, and a, uh, uh, a warlord trait as well, which... Yeah, I want to point this out real fast, too. You, you again, nominate this special det detachment. This is going to trigger for your captains, your ancients, your honor guard, your Victatrix honor guard, your vanguard veteran squads, and stern guard veteran squads. They all gain the, the Victrix guard keyword. Yeah. That's important because if it was just the single unit, then these would be kind of useless. But exactly, but... They're pretty mean. Um, the warlord trait for you is Warden of Ultramar. Once per battle in the fight phase, you can reroll uh, wound rolls for attacks made by friendly Victor's guard units within six inches of your warlord. Right. So, uh, once per battle, eh, not that great. No, but but uh, it's uh, if you put that on a captain, uh, you reroll on a wound and re now you can reroll <clears throat> uh, hits and wounds now in the fight phase. Exactly. And then of course you've got fight like demigods, which. Uh, lets you pick a Victrix guard that's nearby your your captain. Yeah. Uh, and you can add one to hit rolls. Yeah. Uh, so, just, so that's during the uh, the start of the fight phase. Yeah. So it's in close combat. <clears throat> and then f also strike first uh, for Ultramar is kind of boss. I yeah. I know it's three command points and that can make a lot of players go, I don't know. But yeah, at the uh, at the end of your opponent's charge phase, this is when it's triggers. You pick a Victrix guard unit from your army that was charged or performed a heroic intervention, that unit can immediately pile in and fight as it were the fight phase. And they can fight again in the fight phase. Right, so you're attacking, like if you get charged or have heroically intervened, you fight whatever your enemy was charging with before the charge phase, before the fight phase. This isn't phase. even the fight phase, yeah, this is so, still the end of so the charge phase. If you kill that enemy unit, uh, you, you win, they don't, they don't get to they kill you. They don't get you. to kill you, yeah. and, and, uh, you were technically charged, so, so that unit can, I think, still activate and pile in. If, if there's yeah. another combat nearby, you can probably exactly. keep exactly. But, but that's that's the ultimate like get around the this model goes first if yeah. you're charged. This isn't it, even in the fight phase. It, yeah, because it, it, it goes you go faster than demonettes. Yeah, so. it's pretty cool. And then plus your your relic is pretty sweet. It is a uh, a, a super swanky mastercrafted power sword uh, that does two damage and is yeah. AD minus four. Yeah, so. it's plus one strength as well. Uh, so which yeah, is... so pretty spicy. Your your yeah. your strength five. Because uh, you're an ultramarine, so you're strength four normally. You're strength and five, if and you, you're... if you take the ancient, you will also get uh, access to a banner relic as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the standard of Macrag Invalid. No, Invalid. In, in violence, violence. I'm going to yeah. call it the, the violent, the violent uh, standard. You get to add one to the leadership Volatate. of any friendly ultramarines, not just Victrix guard, but uh, ultramarines that are within 12 inches of it, and you get to add one attack to any Victrix guard that are within 6 inches of the bearer. So if you want to make your smurfs be elite smurfs, this is the way to go. Yeah, if you want to hit more and punch more, this is where it's at. Uh, again, specialist attachments, not... There's a cost associated with them, so it's it's pretty good. JR, should we can we show off some more? Or how how yeah, many let's, more? Let's, do we have enough time to show off some more? Let's do. Let's do. You wanna you wanna go through the Indominus Crusaders? Yeah, this is the other one. Actually, you know what? I want to show off. Oh. I want to show off. I want to talk about these two. Okay. You know why? Because we know about the Indominus Crusaders, uh, and uh, let's talk about. I'm a fan of the of the Sons of Dorne, so I wanted to show off these guys. I voted for Pedro. There you go. Crimson Fist Liberator Strike Forest. Uh, again, we're both fans of the Crimson Fist. I yeah. think they're hilarious. I, I think they're amazing. Like yeah. I, I there's nothing that is not to love about why do you find them so hilarious? Well, just I've read the story of Rin's World. I yeah. find them hilarious because the, the whole missile going up and blowing up the monster. I just find that funny. Yeah. But I also find the the it's very uh, uh we're we're from Texas. Yeah. So it's a very Alamo vibe. It, they're very relatable. Yeah, we get that. <laughs> we feel that like rooting for the underdog, you're yeah. getting invaded. You're you're on your back heel the whole time. I just really find it hilarious, but I also really appreciate the absolutely the, the story. And again, this is thematically uh, um, after obviously Ren's world. Right. Uh, the Primaris protocol is kicked in, and Pedro is like, "Yes, I will take all the Primaris you can send me. We Give need some boys." Me. And this is this is all Primaris all the time. So yeah. your your Primaris characters, intercessors, reavers, hellblasters. Uh, all gain the Liberator Strike Force keyword. Yeah. Uh, so if if you've got some Primaris boys, they're gonna be special. Yep. Uh, their Warlord trait is uh, Expert Instructor. You reroll ones 
for Liberator Strike 4 units within, uh, within 9 inches of your Warlord. So, so not 6 inches, 9, nine inches. Nice. If you put that on a Lieutenant, uh, I think you're re-rolling uh, to wound. Yeah. And you're now and getting you're re-rolling, uh, re-rolling ones to, to hit. hit. So I, I would pay 2 command points for that. That seems pretty saucy. And you still get an extra Warlord out if there you want to. If you want If it. you wanted it. Uh, uh, Relics of Win- Rin's World, you get a Vengeful Arbiter, which is a bolt pistol. It, which it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a spicy, it's a bolt, spicy pistol, bolt pistol. But yeah, I, I, again, I, I don't know that this is as exciting as like it's, the... It is. It's pretty dirty though. Uh, Twelve inch range only because of the pistol. Two shots, straight five AP minus one, two damage a pop. And if you roll sixes, no, no. Oh, sorry. If you hit with this, you can immediately make one additional hit roll. Yep. So theoretically, you, you can get, get four. You four probably shots. will get four shots. You probably are going to get four shots in a potential of eight damage. It's no joke. That's, that, and out to at, that's out to twelve inches. Yeah, so that's, or in that's close combat, you popping dudes. Oh yeah. yeah. I keep forgetting. You know what? You I like pistols. this guy a lot more. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, Strategy wise. Strategy wise, Heroes of Rin's World, 1 CP. What does that one do, JR? Uh, this one lets you pick a Liberator Strike Force <laughs> unit from your army, and until the end of the phase, uh, when you roll a six on, like just a straight up unmodified six on your attack rolls, you get two, you do two hits instead of one. So it's not, you generate an extra mm-hmm, attack. Mm-hmm. It's like baby Tesla weapons. Baby Teslas, I like you it. You do every every six is two hits instead of one. Paragons Adorn is the other stratagem. Uh, you just, at the end of an enemy shooting phase, pick a Liberator Strike Force unit from your army that was targeted by one or more attacks of the phase that unit can immediately shoot as if it were you were shooting phase. so when they shoot you did you shoot my hell blasters i did i'm gonna shoot you with them why did i shoot your hell blasters? i don't know that's stupid of me there you go <laughs> uh and then finally I, I there's more yeah there's there are more. more there's a lot more stratagem uh, uh uh there's a lot more specialist formations but we're gonna end with the black templars this is an army that's near and dear to my heart so oh my gosh um, yes i love um, these guys they're fun uh specialist attachment is the sword brethren so that's going to impact your High Marshal, Helbrick, uh, Emperor's Champion, Captains, Company Champions, and Company Veterans. So all your heroes. They become Sword Brother. Okay. That's that's going to be a that's going to be a real interesting detachment to, yeah. to build, right? That's yeah. like elites out the out the yin yang wazoo, yep. but what is their warlord trait, you, Jr? Uh, their warlord trait, thank you, Adam, uh, lets you add one to your warlord's attacks, and uh, it makes it, it does like the uh, mini Tesla, right? Yeah, mini Tesla. Every every six does two hits instead of one. Not bad, not bad. What are their relics? Uh, their relics is only one. They get the holy orb, of and course so they do. once per battle during your shooting phase, you can instead throw the holy hand grenade of Antioch. Uh, you pick a visible enemy unit within six inches of the bearer and roll a d6 for every ten models in the unit. For every roll of two plus, that unit suffers a D3 mortal wounds. So uh, you really want to use that on like a mob of yeah. orcs or cultists or yeah. whatever. Like like this is for clearing out squads of un- unkillable boys. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Uh, uh, that's actually a call out to the old Black Templar stuff, which I'm not getting into. But let's but talk I about like, their stratagems, it. Adam. Stratagem what, is, what does Uphold the Honor of the Emperor do? Yes, this is a stratagem that you use at the start of your five phase. You mm-hmm. prick a Sword Brethren unit. Uh, until the end of the phase, uh, you roll a d6 each time one of those models takes a wound or loses a wound on a 5-up, you ignore it. They got to feel no pain. Yeah, wow, not that's pretty good. Uh, what? And then, of course, suffer not the unclean to live. Yep. Again, this is a 2-CP stratagem. Heads up on that one. It's a little bit more pricey. You use at the start of the fight phase. You pick a Sword Brethren unit. Uh, add one to the attacks characteristics of models in the unit for this phase. In addition, you can re-roll wound rolls for attacks rolls uh, made by that unit until the end of that phase. Now that would so be really neat. spicy on like a unit of company veterans or something. Yeah. Cause... Now, again, if you are an old uh, Black Templar player like I was, uh, those are actually old school callbacks. That's kind of why I want to show this one Yeah, off. This absolutely. is just an old call out, kind of a love letter, if you will, to the old Armageddon book. And that's, uh, I really appreciate it. And that's just the Imperial stuff. There's still so yeah. much more, yeah. but we're not going to talk about them no. now. No. Uh, for now, that's that's everything. That's everything we're going to be talking about in the Vigilist Defiant campaign book. Whew. I can't wait to see where GW takes you. Yeah, I, I am looking forward to Vigilist like Vigilist Two. Vigilist Two. This time it's personal. Yeah. Again, uh, Electric Boogaloo. This one is just part one of the Vigilist campaign. There is a second part coming out. We don't know when that is. 2019 is a safe guess. <laughs> but for now, we can enjoy this book as is. We can enjoy the introduction. Of the specialist attachments, we can enjoy. I am positive, we're going to see more of those. Yeah, I, I am as well. I think that's the way that 40k is going forward. At any rate, yeah. I am Jr. I'm Adam Harry. We're both from Bell of Lost Souls. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
click to subscribe. Check out more videos. And thanks for watching.